Yeah. yeah. So, uh, think, boys and girls. It takes a lot of thinking to be a Christian. Well, I'll tell you. You know, take. Are you a Hindu? I'm actually an atheist, but yeah. Raise that. See, and you're, uh, in Hinduism, is pantheistic. Pantheism teaches that God is everything and everything is God. Well, that's true, then really God is nothing. And really the ideal is nirvana, which is a state of nothingness. You know, you are, you keep getting reincarnated until you lose your sense of self-consciousness, your sense of self-awareness in the universal consciousness. But see, in Christianity... Hey, I'm trying to video. Can you uh, go your, uh, your personality is real. Your ego is real and valuable. Question? Yeah. Uh, so you say that any religion that is not Christian or your wife said Judaism, I suppose, is going to hell, right? Right. So, what do you tell the people that never had the chance to be exposed to Jesus Christ? They're just going to go automatically to hell? If you've never had an opportunity to hear of Jesus, you're not accountable for knowing Jesus. But we are all accountable. We all intuitively know right from wrong. We have a conscience that affirms we ought not to lie, steal, and cheat. I have a question. So, but we've all lied, stolen, and cheated. So we're all responsible and accountable. We're all uh, deserving of hell. We all know the golden rule. Do on others as they would have, as you would have them do unto you. No one wants to be lied to or cheated. I have a question. So don't you lie or cheat. Treat others the way you want to be treated. So we all know our moral obligation. Just ask yourself, how do you want to be treated? And treat others likewise. How do you feel about white lies? Think like what lies that are meant to help and not to not, no, that would not, be not sin. necessarily to deceive. That would not be sin. Because there's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Uh, there were Germans who lied to the Nazis and hid Jews. In doing so, they risked their own life. They were often found out and sent to the concentration camps themselves. This was an unselfish lie. It's selfish lies uh, that are sinful. And, of course, most lies, 99 out of every 100 lies, is a selfish lie. But sometimes it might be your moral obligation to lie. Brother Dad, Not everyone deserves the truth. So, just a minute. So these Germans violated the letter of the law, but they kept the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is the purpose of the law, the reason for the law. See, the law is designed to promote the highest good of all. So sometimes it might be for the highest good for you to tell a lie. There was a woman in the Bible who lied. Her name was Rahab the harlot. And she hid the Jewish spies. And God spared her because of that. She violated the letter of the law, but she kept the spirit of the law. Uh, can I ask my question? Um, how, is, how were those... You say that everyone deserves death, right? Yeah. So uh, how, is, how is it valid to lie to uh, to save Jews from being exterminated since they deserve death? How is, how is it good to save them from death? The Germans uh, who lied deserve death because they have sinned too. But out of, uh, uh, yes, you have a sense of realization that you try to spare it. And ultimately, you can be spared the second death. But, you but see, the first death occurs when the soul leaves the body. But there is a second death, whereas the unbeliever is cast into the lake of fire. Why, why is it good to uh, why is it good to save people's lives if it's not what they deserve? <laughs> God offers us what we don't deserve. 
grace, mercy, forgiveness, but didn't you say the that grace God of God that brings salvation. See, if we all got justice, we would all get hell. But God is not a God of strict justice. He is just. But if He can figure out a way of saving people and still uphold justice, He'll do it. And His way is the atonement of Christ. He substituted the sufferings of Christ for the eternal damnation of sinners. God offers us what we all don't deserve. Eternal life. That's what I'm offering you people. Eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. I have a question, brother. You should say thank you, Brother Jed, for bringing this great message of hope to me. I have a question. What hope do you have? Uh, I have a question. He hopes in reincarnation. It's all like what do you hope to come back as a cockroach? Yes. <laughs> I have a question. Dog? Brother Jed, I have Dog? a question. How come you don't have altar calls or ask someone for if they want to have deliverance? How come you don't do that? I say follow Jesus. You know, Jesus did not. The altar call? There's nowhere in the Bible where Jesus said, now let's all bow our heads and pray. Well, and now uh, while no one's looking around, will someone, call, will someone man? lift up their hand and say, follow Christ? Jesus just walked up to two men, two brothers, and said, Peter, Andrew, follow me. Where's the and altar call, I man? will make you to become fishers of men. I'm looking for disciples. I'm not here offering up uh, uh, just a free ticket to heaven, looking for disciples, soldiers of the cross, who will forsake all to follow Christ. That's my call. Jesus commanded men to repent. <laughs> this isn't a Baptist church out here. This isn't a Billy Graham crusade even. This is spiritual warfare. The devil has captured your mind, your body. I'm here to set you free. By how? Through the blood, through the power of Christ, through the truth, the preaching of the truth. Jesus said, know the truth, and the truth will set you free.